As a Navy SEAL officer, I've seen my share of intense and classified missions, but there's one event that still haunts me to this day, even though it happened years ago. I can't go into details about the operation, but I can say that it was unlike anything I've ever experienced. It was so intense that it's left me with a sense of unease that I can't shake off. As a SEAL, I'm trained to handle even the most dangerous situations, but this particular mission was different. It left me questioning the very fabric of our reality. It's a feeling I don't wish upon anyone else, but as an officer, it's my duty to warn others about potential dangers. So even though I can't go into exact details of the op, I feel obligated to share what I can to keep others safe. This is a story that needs to be told, not just for the sake of sharing what happened, but for the sake of warning others about the potential dangers that may exist beyond our understanding. I hope that by sharing what I can, others will be better prepared to face the unknown, no matter how terrifying it may be. But please understand, I can't reveal too much, for the sake of my own safety and that of my fellow SEALs. There is an isolated island which is like nothing you've ever seen before. No one lives there, and no one visits it. It's almost like it doesn't exist. But as a SEAL, I know that just because something is out of sight, it doesn't mean it's out of mind. Our vessels have passed by the island before and we've always felt an uneasy sense of foreboding. But it wasn't until that fateful day that we realized just how dangerous it really was. The team was passing by the island to get to SEALs, but everything on board lost power. It was like an electromagnetic pulse had gone off, wiping out all of our systems. The team was stranded, powerless, and vulnerable. It was like something out of a horror movie. And then we heard the radio crackle to life. It was the team, and they were panicked. They said they could see something moving on the island, something that shouldn't be there. And then the radio went silent. As another team was sent to check what was wrong, I was a part of that team. We suspected someone was on the island, someone who shouldn't have been there. And it was our job to find out who or what it was. But as soon as we set foot on that island, we realized just how difficult it was going to be. Our compasses wouldn't function accurately there, and it was like the very air was conspiring against us. The atmosphere on the island was odd. The air was both hot and cold against our skin, and it was heavy, like it was pressing down on us. And then there was the smell. It was like nothing I'd ever experienced before. It was a combination of rotting vegetation, burning ozone, and something else. Something I couldn't quite put my finger on. It was enough to make my stomach churn and my head spin. As we combed the island, we realized that it was going to be more difficult than we thought. The terrain was treacherous, and there were hazards around every corner. But it was more than that. It was like the island itself was alive, and it was fighting back against us. We heard strange noises in the distance, and we saw things moving out of the corner of our eyes. It was like we were being watched. Stalked, even. And then the worst part happened. I felt out of breath, which is not typical for a Navy officer. The air felt like it was thickening around us, and it was getting harder to breathe. It was like the air itself was toxic. Despite the difficulties, we decided to push past them and conduct an in-depth survey of the entire island. Checking all the previously unchecked spots, we were in the dense woods midway through the island, when I suddenly felt a prickling sensation on the back of my neck. It was as if someone was watching me. I motioned for the team to stop and scan the area my senses on high alert. As we stopped in our tracks, I could feel the weight of the silence that surrounded us, the rustling of leaves, the chirping of birds, and even the rustling of our gear had come to a sudden halt. Everything seemed to be frozen in time. I looked around trying to spot anything out of the ordinary, but everything looked the same. The dense foliage of the woods had made it hard to see beyond a few meters, adding to the feeling of claustrophobia that was slowly creeping in. Suddenly, a twig snapped, and my heart skipped a beat. I signaled my team to be on high alert as we slowly moved forward, each step punctuated by the crackling of the leaves under our feet. The feeling of being watched had now turned into a full-blown paranoia, and my mind was racing with thoughts of what could be lurking in the shadows. We had to be cautious. We had to be vigilant. We had to survive. As we continued our survey, scanning the surrounding area for any sign of human activity, something caught my eye. 
Out of nowhere, a dog-like creature leaped out of a tree and landed beside my teammate. The creature was sitting on all fours and my teammate instinctively pointed his gun at it. Suddenly the creature stood up on its hind legs, towering over us at an astonishing seven feet tall. We all aimed our weapons at it, but before we could react, the creature pushed my teammate to the ground with incredible force. With my teammate on the ground and the creature towering over him, I didn't hesitate to pull the trigger. The sound of the gunshot echoed through the woods as the bullet went straight through the creature's leg, causing it to let out an ear-piercing screech. My heart was racing as I watched it stumble back, giving us enough time to help our fallen comrade to his feet. The adrenaline was pumping through my veins as I kept my weapon trained on the creature, ready to fire again if it made any sudden moves. Within a minute, another teammate fired right at its head before I could register the creature was on the ground. As we approached the creature, we could see that it was still alive, but barely. Its breathing was labored and its eyes were slowly losing their shine. It was then that we noticed something strange about the creature's eyes. They seemed to be glowing faintly, almost as if they were emitting their own light. We had never seen anything like it before. My team and I exchanged confused glances as we examined the strange hybrid creature. We tried to make sense of what we were seeing, but it was unlike anything we had ever encountered. It was then that we noticed a strange marking on its leg, almost like a tattoo. It was a symbol we'd never seen before, and it seemed to be pulsating with a faint energy. We knew we had to bring this creature back with us and find out more about it. As we carefully loaded the creature onto a stretcher and began our journey back to the ship, a strange feeling settled over us. We knew what we had encountered on that island was something beyond our understanding. We didn't know what to expect, but we knew that our lives had been forever changed by this strange and mysterious creature. Once we finished the survey of the island, half our team was sent back to report to the base, while the rest of us stayed behind to continue the search. We scoured the area thoroughly, but we didn't find anything else out of the ordinary. Finally, we made our way back to the base, exhausted and shaken. To our surprise, a team of officials was already waiting for us when we arrived. They took the creature away in a cage and we were warned not to talk about it openly. It seemed that the Navy was keeping the whole thing under wraps. We never received any reports of mishaps from the island after that, which led us to believe that the creature was indeed the cause of the disturbance. But even to this day, I can't help but wonder what it was, where it came from, and if there are more of its kind out there in the world. As I look back on that mission, I can't shake off the feeling that the creature we encountered on that isolated island was full of danger. It's something that keeps me up at night, wondering what else is out there. I'm bound by duty to keep certain things confidential, but as a Navy SEAL officer, it's also my duty to warn people about potential threats. I hope that one day we can fully understand what happened on that island and what that creature truly was. Until then, I'll keep the memory of that mission with me a constant reminder of the dangers that lie beyond our known world.